All right, I have another ranking video for you today. And today I'm going to be ranking all of my ColourPop palettes that I have in my collection. Well, technically not all of them. I do have a handful of ones that I've either only used once or not at all. And I'm not gonna put them in the ranking. These are the ones that I'm really familiar with the formulas, the color stories, the looks that I get out of them. And I wanna give you kind of my thoughts. I thought this would just be fun. I have done quite a few like brand specific ranking videos. I can link some of them down below in the description box if you're interested, but I've never done a ColourPop one before. So I thought today was the day. All of the palettes that are still available, I will link down below in the description box, as well as everything that is on my face today. And let's do it. Before we get started with the ranking, a couple things I wanted to say. First of all, please bear with me with my lighting. I know that it looks different than usual. I am having some technical difficulties. Second of all, this ranking, like I always say with all of my ranking videos, it's all ranked based on my opinion. That's my opinion! It's ranked based on color story preferences, formula preferences, definitely the color pop, a lot of it is packaging and like theming because they do do a lot of really cool themes with their collections. And this is just a rough ranking. A lot of these can be switched back and forth quite often. I, I did switch them back and forth a lot when I was coming up with the ranking. So don't take it too seriously. We're just here to have a little fun. I wanna hear from you in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about these palettes that I talk about today, or if there are palettes, of course, there are many palettes ColourPop has come out with. What are some of your favorite palettes from ColourPop? I would love to know. Okay, let's do it. I have 19 palettes to talk about today. 19. And I just decluttered a bunch of my ColourPop palettes in my last declutter. So all of the ones I'm gonna talk about today didn't get decluttered. So none of them are bad, right? I kind of decluttered the ones that were really old or like I was not gonna use, etc. So coming in at number 19. I have the Alice in Wonderland collaboration. This is called the Lost in Wonderland eyeshadow palette. I love the packaging on this. I love the theming on this. I think all the products in this collection were absolutely beautifully done. Love this like cutout of the keyhole with Alice jumping down the rabbit hole. And this is what the actual palette looks like. It opens like a book, really, really cute. Now I will say, the reason that this is coming in in the 19th place is a color story thing. I prefer in my palettes, a gradient of light to deep in my matte shadows. And as you can see, it is heavily in the matte shadows, heavily light, not my favorite. These also aren't like, in terms of quality, like I feel like, there's different levels of quality from ColourPop in my opinion. I don't feel like this is the best quality palette that I've tried. I find personally with a lot of the square pan palettes, the quality's not as great. And that's just kind of my experience with it. I like the shimmers in this. I think some of the shimmers are really pretty, a little bit more on the ethereal side, but generally speaking, this is my least favorite color story that I have that I own. So. Love the packaging, but I'm not really gonna reach us for this one as much. So I was sent a handful of palettes from ColourPop in PR. So if I did get them in PR, I'm gonna pop it up on the screen somewhere just so you know. So one of the ones I did get in PR was the Naruto palette. I don't know anything about this IP. How well it represents it, I can't say. But I can say the palette itself I feel like, again, in terms of quality is just okay. The mattes are pressed very hard in the pan. So the mattes are a little bit more, like you have to build them up quite a bit to get there. I like this color story a lot more than the Alice in Wonderland one because we have light to deep in the mattes. I love how neutral heavy this is. I love neutrals. I love neutrals, so for me, if I can get a neutral look out of a palette, I'm happy. But of course we do also have some pops of color. Some of the shimmers in here are also not my favorite. I do feel like ColourPop has certain shimmer formulas that are a little bit duller on the lid, a little bit heavier on the lid. And this shade right here, this like red one, this gold one, I feel like these two are some of that type of formula of shimmer. Some of the other shimmers are really pretty, but I think the color story is better than Alice in Wonderland, but I still think it's just okay. And the quality is just okay. Coming in at number 17, I have the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon for Love and Justice palette. Once again, I know nothing about Sailor Moon, never watched the show. I'm not really familiar with the IP, but I do really like the packaging on this. I think it's super cute. I love the cats. Like I love these two little cats and the highlighters that came in this collection had those two little cats on the compact. 
adorable. And then here is what the color story looks like on the inside. Now again, I find that this is very light to mid-tone with the mattes. We do have one deep purple matte, but I don't feel like it's super deep. It's like, especially on the eyes, it's more like a, like a deeper mid-tone. Does that make any sense? The shimmers in this are very pretty. I will say that they are very ethereal, very sparkly, super duper pretty. Um, this I would use more as a companion palette to pull in those shimmers, to pull in these pastels. If I have some like deeper mattes, that I would love to do, but you know, overall, just as a whole, not my favorite color story. Coming in at number 16, I have the Glow Getter palette. So this was a palette that was launched with a sister palette, which I did have, and I did end up decluttering the other one. I think it was called So Fly. I kept this one just because I like the color story of this one more. Listen, it's a, it's a neutral palette <laughs> with a pop of like a mint green. So the palettes that ColourPop makes in this format where they're a little more weighted and the actual cover is much thinner than the rest of the palette, I don't know if you know what I mean. Same thing with Naruto. It's the same kind of thing where it's a very weighted palette, but the cover is way thinner and lighter than the base of the palette. I tend to feel like the mattes are pressed really hard in the pan. I don't know if it's just like the pan shape, how it's made or whatever. I find that the mattes are hard, harder pressed in these types of palettes than others. So I will say the mattes in this, are a little bit uh, more on the buildable side. Like you gotta build them up to get, or at least I do, to get the full pigment that I personally like. I think the shimmers in this are really pretty. I love the selection of mattes in here that go from light to deep, pretty much all neutral mattes. And all of the metallics are different. Really pretty, light to deep. I really like this palette. I think it's pretty. I think like everything from here on out, I really like. It's just like, which one do I like more? You know what I mean? And this one is a little, for me, a little bit forgettable. Like I don't really remember that I have it. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Coming in at number 15, I have the Star Wars, The Mandalorian, The Child Palette. So I own a handful of Star Wars themed palettes that you're gonna see come up as we go. So this is the least favorite one that I have, but I still really like it a whole lot. This one, I think the quality is very good. Like the mattes are not super hard pressed in the pan. I don't have a problem like really building it up, getting it to the pigment I want, light to deep in terms of the mattes. The shimmers are very pretty. I think this is a really nice palette. It's honestly, it's just a color story thing. I like greens, but these are very like cool toned greens. I prefer more like olive greens, like what I'm wearing on my eyes today. But honestly, like quality wise, it's very good. And packaging, like he is so, 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 so cute. He's so adorable. Yeah, that's kind of why it's coming in in this position. I don't really have anything major to say about it, except I just like the other color stories more. Coming in at number 14, I have the Aurora Struck palette. I remember when they showed a sneak peek of this on Instagram, I was like, wow, that looks like an absolutely beautiful palette. Like just seeing the cover, I love this cover. It's one of my favorite covers they've ever done. I just think it's so stunningly beautiful. And they did a great job of capturing that cover into a color story. Now, I don't really love you know, greenish blues or bluish greens, which we do have a handful in here, but I do love purples and I do love neutrals. We've got neutrals, we've got purples, we've got some pink tones. And I, I, again, I like this selection of colors in here. I don't feel like it's too repetitive, which can happen with their mega palettes. I, generally speaking, I like the formulas in here. I think the mattes are really good. Some of the shimmers, like this shimmer high latitude, the silver is incredible. One of my favorite silvers in my collection. Like something that's missing for me in here though, it are some purple mattes. I definitely would have liked some purple mattes uh, besides this one, like lavender, maybe a mid-tone purple and a deep purple would have really made it so I could get like a cohesive purple look out of this. But uh, honestly, I think they did a great job with this one. I think it's beautiful. Coming in at number 13, I have the Mandalorian palette. Uh, again, love the packaging. I think with all of their Star Wars stuff, they do a great job with the presentation and the packaging. And then the inside color story, I love. It's like a grungy, kind of cool toned without being like too dusty. It still has some grit to it. You know what I mean? And I love the addition of this mustard. I think that really just stepped it up a notch. I think the shimmers in this are nice. Uh, they're not 
All of them aren't like my favorite, favorite, favorite shimmer formula. Again, some of them are a little bit more of that not super shiny type of shimmer formula, but this silver up here, very, very beautiful. And I just love the grunginess of this. I love a nine pan. I love the packaging. It's a good one. Coming in at number 12, I have the Star Wars C-3PO palette. Uh, again, packaging, I'm gonna repeat myself with that. It's great. And then on the inside, we have this like yellow gold neutral palette. Love wearing these tones, love wearing these tones. I love this edition of the Super Shock. I really like when they put Super Shocks in their palettes. I know some people don't, but I really do. We've got a selection of different depths in terms of the mattes. And then the shimmers are really pretty. Now, is this a little repetitive? I think so. I think maybe they could have done something slightly, just like thrown in something a little bit different to break it up. But I will say the looks that I get out of this, even if they're not that different, I like the looks that I get out of it. And quality is very good. Coming in at number 11 is actually the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today. And it had been years since I used it. And I wanted to use it to kind of recollect my thoughts because I, I honestly, it's been years since I've used it. Should I have used it on my eyes? Maybe not. Maybe it's gonna be giving me a sty or something. I'm hoping not, knock on wood, okay? But I will say, I think, well, let me show you what the palette is first. <laughs> it is the So Jaded palette from Kathleen Lights and ColourPop. Now, I remember when this first came out, It was it their first mega palette? I wanna say it was at least one of their first mega palettes. I thought, wow, that is an absolutely beautiful color story. And I will say even to this day, when I look at this palette, I still think, wow, this is a beautiful color story. This is one of my favorite color stories that ColourPop has done. I just think it's got so many things going for it. It's chaotic, but also cohesive. It's neutral, but it's also muted pops of color. And it's just honestly so beautiful. Now I will say the formula. Now I don't know if it's just because it's so old, but I also am thinking that's not the only reason. I do feel like the formulas have improved from ColourPop since this palette has launched. The mattes are a little bit on the thinner side, which they work, they're fine. I mean, I got this look out of it. I'm happy with this look. And then some of the shimmers are a little bit more on that thin, not super shiny side. This is one I used all over my lid and that it's not very shiny. And then I used Peridot more in like the inside and the middle part of my lid and it looks pretty. It's not anything amazing jaw dropping, but it's pretty. So I just think like the, the quality has improved a lot since this palette, but the color story is stunning. Coming in at number 10, I am going to group a bunch of palettes together because to me, they all belong in the same spot. I feel kind of the same way about them. And it is their nine pan palettes that they have released at Target slash a couple other collections. So let me start off with these two I bought at Target specifically, Fresh Greens and Mauve and Up. They come in this like plastic packaging, which is not my favorite packaging, if I'm gonna be honest with you. But we have Mauvin Up, which is a mauve purple, really, really pretty monochromatic palette. And I would say that the formulas in these palettes are really nice. The mattes are nice. They're not super hard pressed in the pan. You do get a good amount on your brush when you use it. And depending on the palette, I feel that the shimmer formula changes from palette to palette. We have some shinier metallics. We have some metallics that are just like, okay. You know, so it depends on the palette. This is Fresh Greens. I love this one as well. We do have some like cooler tone leaning greens, but we also do have some olive greens as well. And then we have three palettes. These ones I got in PR. They are from the Wish You Were Here collection that launched last year, but I'm really grouping them because they're in the same packaging. And to me, they're the same formulas generally. So we have Daydreaming, which is much more of a cool tone, dustier purple palette, which I like. Probably my least favorite one of the ones I have, but I still like it. We have Weekend Mood, which is a warm tone palette. Absolutely beautiful. And it's got a couple of pops of coral in there. We have Glitzed Out in this palette, which is definitely a one of these newer formulas that ColourPop is doing, where it's a glitter hybrid uh, shade, where it's kind of like a pressed glitter, but it's eye safe. And then my favorite one of the ones I have is The Feels. This is more of like a grungier warm tone palette with a couple of pops of green. So Love these palettes, I think they're great. When I went away on vacation this summer for two weeks, I, I brought all five of these palettes 
with me as my only eyeshadow palettes and I really got a lot of use of them. I really enjoyed the looks that I got out of them. I was very happy to have these with me on my vacation. So I think they're good quality. I think if you're looking for a monochromatic palette and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I think it's a great option and they're accessible because they're at Target. Well, not all of these are available at Target, but they have many available at Target. All right, from here on out, we're getting to the stuff that's like, I really like these palettes a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. So coming in at number nine, I have the 1111 collection. I was hoping this would come at 11 just because it's called 1111. Okay, now this is that same packaging that I was talking about where the cover is very thin and then this part is thicker and weighted. So again, I'm gonna repeat myself. I do feel like these mattes are pretty hard pressed in the pan. So they're not as pigmented as some of their other matte shadows, but I will say, I think this palette is absolutely beautiful. I think it's a neutral palette that's done very well. We've got different undertones. We've got a lot of mattes, which I love when a palette has a ton of mattes. I love this bottom row of like mid-tone to deep mattes. That just like gets me going. I don't know what it is. But then we also have some transition sheets. We have this like really, really, really beautiful white shimmer that is perfect for the inner corner. We have different shimmer options for the lid that are all different in undertone while still being neutral. We have one of these glitter hybrid shades, which is really pretty on the lid. I think this is a really gorgeous palette. I honestly do. I think it's really, really well done. I just like everything else a little bit more. Coming in at number eight, I have a colorful palette. One of my favorite colorful palettes in my collection, I think quality wise, this is one of ColourPop's best palettes they've ever done and that is the Lush Life palette. This has been discontinued. They tend to discontinue things that are amazing, okay? And this is one of those situations. I brought this when I went to Miami a couple of years ago and I was feeling it. I was feeling it. It's a perfect like tropical vacation palette summer palette and beautiful. The quality of these shades is so good. The mattes are pigmented. The shimmers are like wet looking, absolutely beautiful. I love a palette where I can create a neutral look and a colorful look. And that is how I feel about this. We've got quite a few neutral shades and then we have pops of color. I think this is balanced so well. And honestly, most of all the quality is phenomenal. Coming in at number seven, I have a OG palette, uh, one I bought a really long time ago, but it still holds a pl special place in my heart because I do think it is one of ColourPop's best palettes, and that is the That's Taupe palette. I always say if you want the Natasha Denona Glam palette in a condensed version, that is, in my opinion, better. Shade, shade, shade. And you want it to be more affordable. I think this is a great option if you are a cool tone lover, or even if you're not, because I'm not a cool toned lover. I prefer warm tones. I still love the looks I get out of this. Again, it's balanced in such a beautiful way where you have light to mid tone up on the top for the mattes. You have a deeper mat on the bottom and all of these shimmers are absolutely beautiful. And I think that's what for me makes this a little more stepped up than the Ta Natasha Denona is I like these shimmers a little bit more. They're a little bit more sparkly. They're a little bit more impactful. And I love the packaging with the snake skin. I think this is a great, a great little cool tone neutral palette. Definitely recommend it. Coming in at number six, I have the plush like me palette. So I find now I could be like, saying a conspiracy theory, but honestly, this is how I feel. I feel like with ColourPop, they're different packagings in case a certain formula, if that makes sense. Like this packaging where it has the textured outside, it has a heavier base and a very strong magnetic closure and a detailed mirror. There are quite a few palettes in this format. I think these are some of the best palettes that ColourPop has like quality wise. And you will see another one coming up higher on the countdown because I just think the quality, again, quality of this is very good. The mattes are really buttery, really easy to use. The shimmers are not as like sparkly in your face, but they do have that little bit of shine. They're just like sophisticated and beautiful. I love the color story of this. And I think they were marketing this as like a 90s palette, which I can totally see. We have some like cranberry tones down here. I, I just think this is an honestly beautiful palette and the quality is very good. I got this in a mystery box from ColourPop and I was very, very excited to me. It was worth it. 
just for this palette. Coming in at number five, I have a palette that is newer to me and I did recently mention it in my monthly palette ranking. So I will also link that video down below if you're interested in checking it out, but it is the Bare Necessities palette. I don't know what it is, but I really enjoy their mega palettes. I think they do a really good job. I think the formulas generally are very good and they do a good job of not like being too repetitive with shades. Although I will say a couple of these shades to me are a little repetitive in terms of my usage. Like some of these lighter tones, I didn't need all of them, but that's okay. I think they'll work differently on different skin tones. I just honestly found myself wanting to reach for this palette every day. I had to stop myself from using this palette to reach for other things that I'm testing because I can get so many beautiful neutral looks out of this, looks that I just go to that I love. I like that we have different undertones in here. We have true neutrals, we have some more purpley tones, and then we have warmer tones. There is a handful of cooler tones in here as well, but yeah, I think this is a beautiful just palette that you can have in your collection if you are a neutral lover like me, that it's just easy to grab it and create a look. Almost every shade goes with every shade here. I love that you have a matte black. That is wonderful for me. I love that I have two options for an inner corner, both a shimmer and a matte, which is great for me. It's, it's stunning. Honestly, it's a great, great palette. Okay, the top four are honestly interchangeable. I love all four of these equally. It's just in this exact moment, which one I picked as four, three, two, or one. Okay, so take these four recommendations and run with them because all four of these are gorgeous. So coming in number four, again, I have multiple palettes that I am grouping together and that is the ColourPop quads. I freaking love these quads. I think they are so beautiful. Some of the best quality shadows ColourPop has ever done in my opinion. So I only have four left. I used to have more that I A, decluttered or B, broke. And that is one thing I will talk about in a minute. It's a downside for me. So Citrus Fizz, and I think all the ones that I have right now are the first generation ones, like the very first ones that they released. Really beautiful neutral quad. We have Creamsicle, one of my favorites, which is a little more like coral. So beautiful. We have Mocktail, another absolutely stunning, like warm toned one with the duochrome in it. And this one is broken, Sorbet. I'm gonna be very careful with it. So the shimmer is broken. So one thing I will say about these palettes that is a downside to me is they're very fragile, both the packaging and the shadows. I've had many shadows break on me and I don't take these traveling. They literally just sit in my drawer and they I take them out when I use them and I put them back. So... <laughs> It's kind of a bummer how lightly pressed they are in the pan. But with that being said, because they are so lightly pressed in the pan, they are just like ultra pigmented, the, the mattes and the shimmers are ultra sparkly. Like you just get a lot of product on your brush or your finger and it's like, bam. bam, bam. Quality is phenomenal. And I love how they have built out these quads in such a way that makes it very easy to create looks. You have a mid-tone or a light matte, a deep matte, and then two different shimmer options. I think they do a great job with their color stories and I love them. Now I will say I have had a couple of quads in the past that I don't like as much as others in terms of quality of shimmers in particular. Um, but the ones that came in that original collection, I think are very, very good quality and I love them. It, it sucks that they're so fragile because I would love to take them traveling, but I don't trust doing that. But quality of these shadows is so good. Coming in at number three is a palette that came in my top 10 palettes of 2023. I love this palette, obviously. It's the Smokin' Hot palette. Listen, I told you I love their mega palettes and this is a mega palette full of warm tone neutrals. It is so beautiful. Now, everything I've said about the formulas in the mega palettes, like the Bare Necessities palettes, is how I feel about this. The mattes are really nice. There's different shimmer formulas in here, I will say, compared to the other mega palettes I've talked about. We have a couple of those glitter hybrid shadows. We have some more standard metallics that aren't super shiny. Then we have a little bit more of a shiny metallic. I love the variety of tones in here. And I just love my look. Every single time I create a look with this palette, I'm like, wow. I end up loving it. And it's just honestly, to me, my heart in a palette. I don't find this repetitive or boring because I like the look that I get out of it. I can see why other people would find it that way. But for me, it's a go-to. 
Okay, these two top two palettes are my top two palettes from ColourPop. I could really potentially put one or the other first. It really doesn't matter. They're both number one in my heart. But there can only be one number one today. I understand that. So just know that these two are my two favorite palettes from ColourPop, obviously. obviously. <laughs> Coming in at number two, I have the Star Wars palette. I almost did not buy this palette. I remember seeing it during my new makeup releases and I was like, oh, that's really pretty. I don't need it. And then I sat and I thought about it and I ended up buying it a little bit after launch. And I am so glad that I did. I don't know if this is still available. I'm assuming it's not, but I hope it is. I think they did an amazing job of capturing the movie poster and making it into a color story that's wearable, but also true to the poster. Because it's not easy to do that, right? Because I feel like a lot of times it's like, oh, well, it's not true to the IP, but it's like, yeah, if it was true to the IP, it wouldn't be very easy to create looks with, right? So they just did a great job of balancing those two things. I love these two marbled Super Shock shades. I think they're so fun. And the quality of this, I think is stepped up. The mattes are pigmented. The shimmers are so pretty. I think quality is very, very, very good. I love that we have a matte black. I love that I can get a neutral look out of this. There's quite a lot of neutral colors in here, but of course we also have pops of color. I love the quality. I love the packaging. I kept the outer carton as well because I love the outer carton. They did a great job with this one. And coming in at number one, can I get a drum roll please? <laughs> color pop discontinued this one. Okay, now listen color pop, if you're watching, which I'm sure you're not, you need to bring it back. It is one of your best palettes you've ever done, in my humble opinion. And that is the Limoncello palette. Everything about this palette, I love. Everything about it. It is that same kind of thing I was talking about with Plush Like Me, where it's a textured cover, heavier, uh, detailed mirror. I think these palettes, the quality is just so good. Looking at this palette, it makes me want to be in Italy in the summer. That's, it, it like transports me there. One of my favorite covers they've ever done. I think it's stunning. And then on the inside, we have this beautiful neutral color story with a couple of pops of color. Even the detail of the background, like this part is all textured. Oh, it's so, it's so luxurious feeling. I wore this palette yesterday because again, I wanted to like bring back my thoughts about it and it was everything. It was everything I remembered it being. This shade up here called Easy Peasy is a duochrome that is like a gold with a slight like kind of greenish reflect. Absolutely beautiful. These shimmers, like I said about Plush Like Me, they're not ultra sparkly, but they are just like sophisticated, shiny. I don't want to say soft, but they're just like that beautiful standard shimmer that I personally love. I love the selection of shimmers. You have this like pop of yellow, which I think is so fun. This pop of green, which I think is so fun. But of course you can create a purely neutral look with this. The mattes are just buttery, blendable, easy to use. I love the different depths of these mattes as well. It's honestly, it's beautiful. It is so good. I'm so sad that they discontinued it. I'm so, so sad. Maybe they'll bring it back one day, who knows? But it is my favorite palette from ColourPop that I own. All right, and that is it for this ColourPop ranking. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your thoughts down below about any of the palettes that I mentioned today. Do you also love them? Do you also agree with ranking them lower? Let me know. Even if you disagree with me, I would love to know your thoughts. And it, there are so many palettes from ColourPop, obviously, that I didn't mention. I would love to know some of your favorite ColourPop palettes down below in the comments because I love hearing from you. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I do upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you back on my channel again. I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.